If you still don't believe that Bitcoin's halving is going to lead to higher prices, you need to watch this video. In the last three months, Grayscale bought one third of all new Bitcoin mined. Grayscale Investments has increased its Bitcoin holdings by 60,000 coins in the past 100 days, equal to roughly one third of all Bitcoin produced at that time. If Grayscale continues to buy the same amount of Bitcoin today that they have been just in the past 100 days, because the supply flow has been cut in half, now they'd be buying two thirds of all the new Bitcoin mined. And now the supply is going forward. If Grayscale continues to buy the same amount of Bitcoin that they have been, now only one third of the new supply is left for other investors. It's simple supply and demand. Less supply, more demand leads to exploding prices. And this will have a huge effect on Bitcoin's price going forward, especially as even more institutions come into the space. Because by the way, it's not like Grayscale is the only company buying large amounts of Bitcoin on a regular basis. If we add just one more company, Square Cash App, together, buying over 50% in Q1 of 2020, there really isn't that much new Bitcoin for other investors to get at. So the supply flow got cut in half this year. What happens going forward if somebody wants to buy Bitcoin, but the supply is drying up? Well, buyers will have to bid the Bitcoin out of the hands of people who already own the Bitcoin. Good luck trying to get a Bitcoin hodler to part with his stack, right? I mean, think about this in years and decades into the future. I don't know about you, but almost every Bitcoiner that I know says that there's a certain amount of their stack of Bitcoin that they will never sell. And we understand why, right? I mean, this is like digital gold. And if you know Gresham's law, you want to spend your fiat, which is losing value, and you want to keep your harder money, in this case, Bitcoin, which is holding and or gaining value. Plus another reason why nobody wants to part with their full stack of Bitcoin because people are afraid of, of missing out on these huge run-ups like we've seen so many times before. And once you're out, you know, it's hard to get back in. So what happens five years from now? What happens 10 years from now when we still only have going towards the 21 million Bitcoin that will ever be created? There's not going to be more Bitcoin. Plus, we have exponentially more people who are unwilling to sell a certain percentage of their Bitcoin stack. What happens then? The name of the game is to accumulate as much Bitcoin as you can now because it looks to me like this thing is really has a future. At the very least, it really has a future, especially in the macro environment we are in right now where Bitcoin is being treated as a hard asset and being in conversations as digital gold. I like this. I'm going to retweet this. And by the way, guys, if there are any newbies watching this video right now and you're interested in buying Bitcoin, uh, two of the easiest places to buy Bitcoin is Coinbase. You can use this link and get $10 or Square's Cash App. You can use this code and get $5. Or if you just want to accumulate Bitcoin for shopping online, uh, a pretty cool thing is this one in red right here, uh, Lolly, where again, you'd get $10, I believe. And you can see I have the, the Lolly thing uh, right up here. And uh, yeah, share this with a friend and you will each get $10 in Bitcoin. And you can see shopping online, clothes or whatever, uh, you could earn Bitcoin back, which is pretty cool. So I just wanted to plug this stuff. A lot of people ask in the comments nowadays, you know, how to accumulate or how to buy Bitcoin. Moving on to some recent news. I want to start with uh, global macro news, and then I want to move on to uh, some altcoin news. Litecoin has a partnership. But before we get to that, the Chinese Communist Party adds crypto to its curriculum pretty interesting. A higher education institute that trains Chinese Communist Party officials has published a new book about cryptocurrency. Well, the question is, what exactly is in this book? Well, the book starts off with the history and origins of fiat currency. Then it provides an overview of the current credit currency system and its downside. This leads to a section on the crypto movement and the birth of Bitcoin. The book continues to explore the nature and the future of digital currency and explains in detail what crypto exchanges or what are crypto exchanges and what are ICOs. It discusses and analyzes regulation issues surrounding these new developments. And it you know, goes on, it talks about central bank digital currencies, it talks about other form of cryptocurrencies. The bigger picture is that, you know, obviously nobody's a fan of the, you know, the Communist Party of China, but cryptocurrency and everything I just talked about is now in their nationalized curriculum, which is 
just a step in the right direction for uh, for crypto. Now, speaking of central bank digital currencies, we have some news on this. The digital euro sees the first successful test at the Bank of France. France has become the first country to successfully trial a digital euro and operate that's operational on a blockchain. The bank says it tested a sale of securities for central bank digital currency, CBDC, on May 14th, signaling the beginning of a more of more robust testing. So it's pretty obvious that probably in the next five to 10 years, all nations are going to transition into a uh, centralized digital currency. And with that comes the risk of them eliminating cash. Um, obviously, you'd want to have a, you know, a truly decentralized permissionless cryptocurrency as a way to opt out of that. You know, right now, you know, the main one is Bitcoin, but uh, just realize where the future is heading. Just realize where the world is becoming more digital, realize where we're trending and invest accordingly. Let's get to a little Litecoin news. This was uh, tweeted out by the Litecoin Foundation's Twitter. For all you Atari flashback fans out there, get ready to use Litecoin for everything from games to hotels. Atari and the Litecoin Foundation announcing the start of their partnership. If we click on the link, this was the uh, most pertinent part. Atari, known globally for some of the most beloved video games in history, such as Asteroids, Breakout, Centipede, and others, will provide Litecoin users the ability to use their coins in multiple ways throughout the Atari ecosystem. The first is as a means of investment, Litecoin being accepted as a payment method into the soon-to-be-released Atari token. The Atari token will have multiple uses, including the ability for hodlers of the token to manage purchases and track digital assets within the Atari ecosystem, and as a payment method in the recent announcement, Atari Casino. So uh, just as you thought, you know, Atari couldn't uh, maintain its relevancy, they're partnering up with Litecoin Foundation, and it seems that although they're accepting Litecoin, they're also creating their own Atari token. Very interesting, very interesting. We'll see how that plays out. And finally, since Litecoin is a topic of conversation today, um, I found this interview interesting. I shared with you the link to this whole Masari interview with Turda Meester um, in a video from a couple days ago, but I want to share with you another clip that happens near the end where Tur gives his opinion on the altcoin market and actually says, I own some Litecoin. And I thought this was really interesting. I'll leave you with this video. Make sure everybody likes the video, supports the channel, watch this whole thing if you want. I'll leave the link in the description. This is his opinion on just his thoughts on the market going forward. And I'll leave you with this. Later, guys. What are your thoughts on... Uh, other assets or other crypto assets. You know, you've been, you've been very outspoken um, uh, and to the negative about some other crypto assets. Is there is there anything that would uh, get you excited about other types of cryptos, or or do you view Bitcoin in the context of a broader real world portfolio and 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 just sticking with Bitcoin as the one digital asset that's a a good portable um, and censorship resistant hedge to everything else going on? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I think Bitcoin sh in in the cryptocurrency realm, like I think you want to be overweight Bitcoin, like you know, have like very very significant part of your portfolio. But it's almost like in the gold world, in in the world of precious metals, you want to own mainly gold. Of course, you can have some silver too, and some miners, and but like have that be like thirty percent max or something. But but like for example, it matters if you have a capital gains environment or not like you know if you if you can easily trade out of coins then maybe you can have a bit more exposure or something or if you're a good trader or whatever um, but i do think generally speaking that the altcoins by and large are not going to come back especially not as strongly as they did in 2017 so the bitcoin dominance rate is never going to go i think as low as it did back then um i think a few coins are going to do well i mean i, I have a few Litecoin, like people are going to shoot me now <laughs> uh, because I, I just, as a play on, I've always kind of beat myself up uh, that my investments were driven by like my analysis and like, you know, this is what I think and this, mm -hmm. whatever, this technology doesn't really make sense. I'm not going to own it. Whereas I missed out, like I missed out on Ethereum because I wasn't thinking in terms of the market psychology, you know, where it could go. And so I feel like if we're going to have a retail phase, Again, 
people are and and bitcoin inevitably is going to be labeled the digital gold and so then are, they're going to be like with their unit bias they're going to be like one bitcoin is so expensive what else is there so who knows i just have a little bit you never know um and then one area that i that i've been looking at is the exchange and again i'm gonna get i'm gonna get roasted for this but <laughs> it's the um, the uh, ie what is it called ieos the exchange mm -hmm. tokens 